Bi week reflection time. Let's get it. And before we get into this video, quick word from this video sponsor, BetUS. BetUS, America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign up bonus. And to celebrate our 30 year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins. Now, I know the Jaguars are on a bye week, but there are still plenty of games this weekend to put different wagers on. If you guys are interested, man, use the promo code down below. It's going to match your first deposit by 125%. So big shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video as well as the channel for this season. Now, let's get on to this video. Now, earlier this week, the NFL official handle put out a tweet basically saying that, look, these are the four teams in the AFC that are currently 6-2. and two. And on the picture, it showed Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs. It showed Tua with the Dolphins. It showed Lamar Jackson with the Ravens. And, of course, our guy Trevor Lawrence with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, when I saw that tweet, it couldn't help but to bring me back to 2020. And in 2020, I made a video on the channel that had a lot of controversy. It was called, Should the Jaguar Fans Root for the Team to Tank? And I was out there basically saying both sides of the argument. And, you know, there was, there was reasoning why, you know, one side wanted this and the reason why one side wanted the team to tank. And I made it pretty clear the reasonings why I wanted a tank. And, you know, when I look back kind of through the comment section, the main argument non-tank people were saying was that, look, this is going to, you know, we need to win games because it builds a culture of winning. You know, but the big thing about that is that when you look at it from the other side, who are the leaders of the team? You look at it, Doug Marone was gone after the year. Uh, Dave Caldwell, gone after the year. Gardner Minshew traded the following season. So really the pillars of the organization that we were trying to like build a culture with was not going to be there you know, when the Jaguars in 2021, when they actually started, you know, playing more games. So, you know, there are a bunch of different reasons why I wanted the Jaguars to tank. The main thing was, look, I wanted the Jaguars to get the best quarterback possible, you know, which was Trevor Lawrence. Now, there are different times where, you know, maybe you get like the third quarterback taken and it still works out pretty well. That's kind of what happened in the 2020 NFL draft where, Joe Burrow, Tua Tungavaola, Justin Herbert, and Jalen Hurts all got drafted that year. And look, it worked out pretty well for all the different teams. You know, not a bad time. But in 2021, the draft was completely different. You know, when you look at the first round, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. And everybody besides Trevor Lawrence and maybe Justin Fields are hot garbage. I mean, you look at Tre Justin Fields, it's year three, and there's still big question marks on him. You know, the guy has really good games sometimes, you know, mostly in the rushing category, but, you know, he doesn't stay healthy. And overall, Bears fans are still wondering, can this guy do it? And this is coming upon a year where, you know, this offseason, the Bears GM and their organizations going to have to make a decision of, does this guy deserve a fifth-year option? Or maybe they end up with a number one pick and maybe they decide, okay, we're going to move on from this guy. So there's a bunch of different things going on there. But um, yeah, the number one pick got the Jaguars Trevor Lawrence and he is by far and away the best quarterback of that draft class. And I cannot imagine where the Jaguars would be right now had the Jaguars not had the number one pick. Now, another reason why I won the number one pick and to tank and lose all our games is that it gets you the best head coach candidate. Now, at the time, it got us Urban Meyer, and Urban Meyer really only went to the Jaguars because of Trevor Lawrence. But when I look back on it, there were two good things about Urban Meyer. One good thing is that he was absolutely awful. And I say that not really sarcastically, because when you get a head coach, you either want them to be a superstar head coach or you want them to be really, really bad so you know to cut ties early. You know, if you get a middle of the road guy, you end up with like a Gus Bradley for three or four years or Doug Brown for three or four years, or even like, I don't know, like a Frank Reich or something, a guy that's 
not completely terrible, but at the end of the day, you waste all these different years on him and say, dang, like, you know, we were investing all this time into him when it turned out to be, you know, nothing, nothing good coming out of him. So, you know, that's, that's one thing is that, look, um, you know, he was really bad. So the Jaguars were able to cut ties before the year even ended. He didn't even last the full season. Um, and the second good trait about Urban Meyer was that, look, a part of him coming into the Jaguars was that he said, look, we need a state of the art practice facility. So a lot of us went to the Miller Electric Center for training camp practices. And a big reason, maybe the main catalyst for that being here was Urban Meyer. You know, maybe Doug Roan comes over and the thing isn't ready till 2024 or 2025. But, you know, that Miller Electric Center, as the Jaguars are sitting here going through stadium negotiations, I feel pretty good about stadium negotiations because the Jaguars, Shad Khan dropped over $100 million of his own money. And I know the guy's a billionaire, but billionaires don't become billionaires by dropping hundreds of million dollars into bad investments. You know what I mean? So that once the shovel hit the dirt, I'm like, okay, the Jaguars are here to stay. So that was a huge good thing. But while we didn't get the number one, you know, head coach candidate turn out to be, but the main reason Doug Peterson said this week on a Pac McAfee show that Trevor Lawrence was the number one reason for him to come to Jacksonville. Was Trevor the big reason why you chose the Jags? I know there's a lot of places that wanted that, to. It, it, it was. It was. It really was. When I had an opportunity to look at some of the teams that, that uh, I could potentially interview for, uh, Jacksonville was the number one spot because of because of Trevor Lawrence. So a third reason why I wanted the Jaguars to you know get the number one pick is that I was honestly tired of getting picks three to like 10. Look, the Jaguars are finishing with records like four and 12, five and 11, six and 10. And what does that get you? It gets you like kind of like the number five or six overall pick. And, you know, by that time, all the elite quarterbacks are probably gone. It just leaves you in this spot where it's like, it's unclear who you're going to draft and you end up drafting like a defensive end, like Dante Fowler or something. And then you just uh, guys that don't really flip your franchise and do something better. So I was like, okay, the team stinks. I'm finally ready to just lose all these games, get number one pick. And another thing, reason is, look, I didn't want to worry about the Jaguars needing to trade up. Look, we've seen situations like the Pat, Patrick Mahomes, you know, the Chiefs went from like number 20 to 10 to draft Patrick Mahomes. Good move, gave up a first round pick to do that. You know, you saw the Panthers just last year or this year, however you want to say it, you know, traded like a first round pick, a second round pick, like a third round pick, DJ Moore to go from number 10 to number one. You know, they had to trade all this different stuff to move up. The Jaguars, I was like, look, we could just be really bad, get the number one pick, then keep, then the Jaguars have two first round picks, two second round picks, a third round pick. We have a lot of good draft capital. And a big reason why the Jaguars are good right now is because of that 2021 class. Look, the Jaguars were able to draft Travis Etienne, Walker Little, Tyson Campbell, Andre Cisco. Uh, you know, all on day two. Then day three, they went out and got Luke Farrell. Look, some of these guys are huge foundational guys. You take out Tyson Campbell, and you take out Andre Cisco, you know, you take out some of these players, and it's like that those are some players that you probably would have had to sacrifice had you maybe want to make a move to trade up. And look, even if the Jowers finished at number five, you're not getting Trevor Lawrence. You probably had to stay put and come to realization that look, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, the guy we ended up with sucks. So, you know, that 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 right there is a big thing. And, you know, when I look around, there are plenty of teams out there that honestly completely failed their tanks. Um, when I look at the New York Jets, New York Jets beat the Rams. And look, that was probably a top three day for me as a Jaguar fan when the Jets decided to randomly beat the eventual Super Bowl champions, the Los Angeles Rams. They basically handed us here you go. We're going to give you Trevor Lawrence in exchange for this for this pick right here and for this win. And the Jaguars have gone on and they're got an AFC South title. They're well on their way to their second AFC South title since then. And the Jets, you know, while they made the move for Aaron Rodgers, we'll see if he comes back. But, you know, if they had drafted Trevor Lawrence, they would probably be in our same situation. And um, they have a really good roster, so the Jaguars and Jets might have flipped destinies. Maybe Aaron Rodgers comes to Jacksonville, you know, whatever. But I don't like to see how the alternate reality plays out because I guarantee you I'd rather have Trevor Lawrence. Um, you also look at the Carolina Panthers. Look, the Panthers last year finished at 7-10. And 7-10, and honestly, is an awful record. Look, it, you have lots more losses than wins. It gave them, like, the number 10 pick. 
it's just a bunch of meaningless wins and they're a team that wanted a quarterback. But look, they had number 10 pick. They made a move to trade up and get Bryce Young. And right now they are they're the worst team in the NFL. They have the worst record in the NFL right now. If the season were to end the day, they have the number one pick. But that pick is given to the Bears. So now the Bears are going to reap that those benefits. And along with that trade, I think they only have like one pick in the first two days of the draft. So as bad as they are, you look and it's like, we don't have a lot of help coming when it comes to draft wise. So had they been able to maybe lose, you know, if they had number one pick last year, they'd have all this draft capital. They'd probably have their best receiver in DJ Moore still, and they're in a lot better position. So seven and 10, I've experienced it so many times, seven and 10, you're a bad team that is in no man's land in the draft. And then we go to number three, the Dolphins. Maybe the Dolphins in 2020, um, I don't know if you get, or in 2019, I should say, I don't know if they necessarily failed their draft, but, you know, if they had the number one pick, they probably would have had Joe Burrow. And while two is doing good over there for the Miami Dolphins, I think that Joe Burrow is better. And I think Joe Burrow elevates the team more than a guy like Tua would. So, you know, when I look at it this year, there's a ton of teams that, you know, I look at YouTubers and they're cheering for their teams to win. I cringe a little bit. I cringe because I'm like, dude, you guys need to get the number one pick. Like teams include the Patriots, Broncos, Raiders, Giants, Packers. If I'm a fan of any of those teams, uh, a loss is a win for me. Get the number one pick. That'll completely change your organization. There's different things that it does. Getting number one pick, it resets your organization. It gets you a brand new fresh start at ground zero. And it, it's honestly the best way to rebuild. That is the best way to rebuild. Start with your quarterback. Make the determination. Is your head coach the dude? Is the quarterback the main thing that's holding this back? You know, some different teams that will probably make a move for quarterback. Probably too good record-wise to get a top quarterback, but have pretty good teams is the commanders, Vikings, Falcons, Bucks. You would think a you would think a you know good quarterback would elevate those teams. But all in all, man, I'm doing a lot of reflecting and realizing that man, six and two is really, really fun. And I knew three years ago when I was rooting for the Jaguars lose every game, this was the moment that I was waiting for. I did not want short term happiness where I'm happy for like two days to all of a sudden take away from the possibility of what a franchise quarterback does for a team. And while Trevor Lawrence, like there's a lot of people out there, this guy, you know, he's not playing excellent. He's not like MVP caliber. His touchdown intercept ratio isn't all that great. One thing I know about Trevor Lawrence is, look, you know, I've seen bad quarterback teams and he's definitely not a bad quarterback. And I see, I've seen what a bad quarterback does to a team and I've lived through it. And I know that right now, Trevor Lawrence, you know, with the Jaguars, he is able to come out here and just have build a solid foundation for the Jaguars. You know, while the Jaguars haven't, the main thing the Jaguars are missing is not those fourth quarters where he needed to come back and win. And he's had those moments. Look, he had an opportunity against the Colts to come back and win, and he did it. You know, he needed a game winning drive against the New Orleans Saints, he was able to do it. And, you know, there's different times where he's been able to put out teams in the fourth quarter. And we saw that plenty of times last year. So Trevor Lawrence, I really think his best football is ahead of him. And I'm excited to see really what he does for the Jaguars. And, you know, we have an elite quarterback head coach duo with Doug Pearson in here. And it feels like we're finally on the way to not only having a good season, but a good five, ten year season where we're finally building the winning culture that we've wanted to. And we're going to be a team that's competing for for you know, the AFC South every single year that's making deep runs at the playoffs every single year. And, you know, I'm here for it and I'm very ready for it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you were on Team Tank back in 2020 or not. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. Go Jags.